one look at Bakugan Champions of Astoria and you'll probably know if it's a game for you or not. The interesting thing about the entire experience is that it is largely directed towards younger audiences. In that regard, we have a fairly basic RPG with straightforward menus and systems that fans of any age can understand. However, if you're looking for a substantial RPG narrative told within the Bakugan universe, well, you're probably going to be disappointed. Bakugan Champions of Astoria allows players to create their own avatar for this adventure, set in the town of San Barbaris. There is minimal exposition here as you lose a soccer game and then meet up with your friends to head home. On your way back you discover a meteor-like object that is actually a Bakugan and your world has changed forever. Now this trio of friends are huge Bakugan fans, so we can't dwell on how they each don't have Bakugan already, even though most of their friends do, and how sometimes Bakugan can just be found in random places of the map, but for the story's sake, let's just roll with it. After the opening you learn more about the battle and you meet a few characters to enter tournaments where you become the best brawler in town. However, there are also some issues with Earthquake and an actual reason behind this, but honestly, I'd be impressed if you make it this far with even a small understanding of what is going on. The narrative itself is told through one or two text boxes at a time. It mostly revolves around go here to talk to this person, then go here to talk to this person, then Bakugan Brawl. To be honest, you will be in a fight for about 80% of your time playing this game, so if you don't know what's going on in the story, don't worry too much, it doesn't really matter. The only reason you'd want to progress through the story is to unlock new clothing, abilities, and Bakugan. As I said before, a lot of your time will be in Bakugan brawls, but this isn't only because there are a ton of people who want to fight, it's mostly because some fights can take around 10 to 15 minutes to finish. At first this isn't a big deal, but then you enter one of the game's dungeons and you're forced to fight 5 different brawlers back to back, which is when it dawned on me that I was not fond of the battle system at all. During a fight you can equip up to 3 Bakugan and you and your opponent throw the starter on the field. While the these towering beasts fight it out, you are tasked with picking up cores off the ground to charge up the actual attacks that cause damage. This is complete RNG since these cores appearance and placement is completely random throughout the entire fight. Your opponent is doing the same thing, but I found the AI is not really too aggressive for the most part. Still, they always seem to be better at collecting the cores than me. The battles are prolonged further because you're stuck watching the same attack animations over and over again. Bakugan each share attacks as long as they are the same elements. While a Bakugan type can vary in element, there's really very little difference about them. Two Bakugan of the same character will fight almost exactly the same. During the story, more attacks will be discovered, but nothing really stops these fights from being extremely long and tedious, especially if your opponent has three Bakugan that need to be defeated to progress. There are RPG elements such as equipping new attacks to your Bakugan lineup and leveling them up. Let me remind you that this requires more fighting. Things outside of battles are just side quests that revolve around collecting items or finding a certain person. Everything you do is rewarded with coins that can be used to purchase enhancement items. While there are items that make cores appear closer to you or allow you to pick them up faster, I found that the haste shoes work best to get fights over with as quickly as possible. Graphically, Bakugan Champions of Astoria is decent and has a fairly robust map that can be explored. However, these areas can get a little too big, which will have you wishing for a quick travel option as quests send you back and forth across the various maps. Oftentimes, I would forget that the game even has music until I get into a brawl and the battle theme loops endlessly. There are some ambient noises in the background, but for the most part, this is a musicless game. However, I should keep in mind that this is a game for children, and with that, I found Bakugan Champions of Astoria to be an easy to digest RPG. The only thing required is running around and fighting with your favorite Bakugan. To that point, it's almost harmless, and the straightforward battle system that only requires you to collect cores until you charge an attack can be easily understood for young fans. Bakugan Champions of Historia is a tedious and almost mindless adventure that will leave you staring at the screen wondering if it will ever get better. Sadly, it doesn't. However, its systems are easy enough for a younger fan of the series to enjoy and receive a starter course in RPG systems. The best compliment I can give the game is that it works, but other than that, this Bakugan brawl isn't as epic as it could have been. Music Pixel is giving Bakugan Champions of Historia a 6 out of 10. Thank you for watching. Please read the full review on NoisyPixel.net. NoisyPixel is run by a group of gamers who work hard to deliver news, reviews, previews, and more. Please subscribe to keep up with all our future content.